Hi, this is Christian. So in this video, we'll talk about Laravel. Okay, and not doing any coding here, just going over what Laravel is and how we use it in the program. So Laravel, as you can see, is a backend open source PHP, I should say, full stack web application framework. Okay, that is uses that uses PHP as the source uh, language. Um, it embraces or it uses the NVC, the model view controller architecture pattern. You'll see that when we start coding. Um, it has a lot of built-in application uh, features, things I list here, as you can see, and many more, but these are some of the most um, important or relevant ones you will get to use quite a lot. Um, so in this demo, and in, in the next video, we're going to do the following. Okay, we'll install Laravel, uh, create a application, a really simple hello world application in Laravel. Uh, we're going to look at the uh, model view controller and the routes uh, files and folder structures. And we're going to create a simple blade, temp blade templated syntax system, uh, well, actually a template, and then we're going to render the content using the language syntax to the browser. Okay. And these are some really nice readings about um, Laravel, uh, some documentations here. Um, it get, I mean, they have an okay uh, documentation. It's still not the best, uh, in my opinion, the best um, online documentation is still php.net, okay? But um, indeed, they do some really nice uh, examples as, as well. Um, so the tools you need are as follows. You will need at least a PHP 8 or higher, highly recommended. Um, you can still go with 7, I'm pretty sure, but um, it, it may cause some issues. Uh, and the best way to do that is basically install XAMPP in your system, because XAMPP is a, um, a program that installs a stack of other applications you need already, right? The X here stands for cross-platform, the A is for Apache, M is for MariaDB or MySQL, and the P's here are for uh, Perl and PHP, okay? And if you are on a Mac, you want to use it, that's only for Mac, you will use the one that says MAMP, and Windows will say WAMP instead. But I use XAMPP because it's cross-platform. Now, uh, you also need Composer, which is the package installer. This is not only used only for Laravel, it's for the entire PHP uh, framework. So um, this is synonymous to NPM, if, uh, uh, you know, um, when you talk about Node. So you need a Composer to do that and an IDE of your choice. There are a lot of IDEs. Any IDE will work, whichever you feel most comfortable with. You don't have to change IDE, but I'm using Visual Studio Code, so I will stick with this one here. It's free, open source, you already know that. The other one is PHP Storm, which is really powerful. Um, it's not free, but it's really robust, uh, provided by the JetBrains team. So if you want to get a free version of that, you can follow this link here and um, sign up as a student or an educator and some other um, license too to give you a free for one year, okay? But in this example, I will be using just Visual Studio Code so that everybody can use it as well. Okay, and then you also need to install the Laravel CLI. It's recommended after you install Composer, right? So once you do that, just install the Laravel um, CLI globally by running this command right here, okay? So um, that's that. Right, so Composer is really simple. I'm gonna go right there right now just to show you what it looks like. So I'm using Windows. So if you're on a Windows system, just download the executable files and run the installer that way, it's very easy. Um, you can also run in the command terminal like you see here, just copy one of these and run it directly, okay? Uh, if you're on a Mac, uh, they also have um, different ways to do that as well. Uh, Mac or Linux systems, okay? So install that first and then, now, down here, just a little bit of history of Laravel. As you can see, it's still quite young compared to other frameworks, I guess, uh, especially the .NET. Um, but it's been around for the last uh, you know, decade or so. Um, we are now using version nine, right? At the time of this recording. So version 10 is coming up you know, in the next couple of months or so. So versions are important to understand because they can break some changes um, or the uh, photo structures might change a little bit, but the framework will still be the same, okay? So just, just be aware of that. Um, so down here is how you create a Laravel project. Just follow the same steps. Yeah, again, I'm using the composer as opposed to the Laravel. You can also create a project using the Laravel command or Laravel CLI itself, 
but for our example, we'll be using Composer to create that for us, okay? So this is the command here to uh, run your application. Once it's installed, use the PHP artisan command and follow by the serve function, okay? And then by default, I think it's the local host port number 8,000 is the default port number. Um, you can use localhost or you can use the 127.0.0.1, which is the same thing, okay? So here is the structure for Laravel 9, the folder structure, I should say. Now, if you're using the older version of Laravel or a new version, these folder directories may change or may not be a, a, exactly what you see here. So on the left side here is the root directory. The root directory means it's the root project, right? So for example, up here, if I create a project called my app, inside my app folder, I'm going to see these folders in addition to some other files. Here, we're just looking at the directories. So there's about uh, 10, 11 directories in here for Laravel 9, all right? You will see this by default. The one I'm putting in blue here means that they will be uh, created and scaffolded for you automatically when you install or create your project, okay? Um, so it's important here. On the right side is what's inside this app directory. We only focus on this app directory here. So if you open the app directory, you will see these directories as well. The one I put in blue here, again, are the default ones. The one in black are only as need basis. So if you want to create the black ones here like this, you would use the uh, artisan command, make colon, whatever that is, and it will create these folders for you automatically for in here, okay? So um, chances are we're not gonna probably using many of these one here other than just the default ones. And down here is what's uh, what each of these directories do, right? What do they provide and what's their purpose? So if you read about it here, you understand maybe better. But uh, most importantly, we're gonna focus mainly on the app directory, the um, public directory here, uh, resources, and uh, the routes, okay? Um, or, or mainly just mostly these up here, okay? We're not gonna focus too much on the, uh, the bottom ones down here. So these will be a touch quite extensively, especially if you want to config and do some database activities, which we'll probably not do in this, uh, this uh, class. Okay, so down here are some of the, uh, again, information about the other directory and so the app directory here, what these folders are. The important ones we'll be using are the HTTP, uh, the, uh, the providers, maybe just those two, okay? Uh, the other ones, we're not gonna uh, do them. Um, until maybe later, but I think just those two here, all right? Okay, so Laravel uses a template and syntax uh, system called Blade. So it's called a Blade syntax. Or sometimes you refer to view as a Blade view, then we mean a Blade file. A Blade file must have the extension .blade.php attached to it, okay? If you don't have that attached to the file name, is not gonna be rendered by the Blade system. Um, yeah, you can still use a view, just a regular HTML uh, PHP file, which is okay, but you're not gonna be able to inject Blade syntax. So that's what it looks like. And these are, these are stored inside the resources slash views directory, okay? Which is the one I mentioned up here, the views directory, um, not sure here, way up here inside of resources, okay? We'll, we'll see as we code. And then inside that file you open up, it will look just like this, just like a regular HTML document, or if you will, if you're a PHP document, and you will see some of these curly braces in there, right? These are very similar or should be very familiar if you have been using the mustache tags for like Express or um, a Flask or other or Angular um, others, okay? Um, so, uh, Blade also use, uses this syntax here. This is for text or string interpolation. Um, this is actually incorrect. The syntax here, I think it's incorrect um, because the name here should have a dollar sign. Okay, I, I could be mistaken, but it's probably incorrect. Uh, we'll take a look. Okay, so that means you're gonna inject the data you're into here and then it will be parsed and we render to the view you see this is a hello, whatever this name is. Okay, this is how a, um, a function called get is used. 
this is part of the uh, HTTP protocols or I should say HTTP verbs, how you can receive data or a request from the browser. And um, they're going to use to render data to the view. So the get will be a, a re request type. You have this a, a post, a put, a delete, and options, and, and patch, and so forth. Okay. So based on the type of request you receive, you're going to match this pattern. This is the pattern that needs to be matched in the URL. Once it matches this pattern, then it's going to call this function here from here to here. This is, as you can see, it's a callback function or referred to as a closure um, in Laravel and PHP, also known as just anonymous function, basically. Okay, so this function here returns a view. It is a view function that, pass, that you pass data to it. The required parameter is the view name. Okay, these are just some data parameters you pass to the component or the view to be rendered. So if you want to pass the name variable to this template here, you would pass it this way. Um, there are a couple of ways to do this, but the easier way is to use an array of key value pairs, or also known as the associative array, um, or I guess you can also refer to it as object, right? So you do that, and when it renders to the view, you can see a message that looks like this. Okay. Um, all right. So, and then here are just some examples where you can use uh, blade view versus just a PHP view file. So here is an example of a regular PHP code, right? If you have a that PHP file, you have, um, you know, this is the HTML area. And if you want to inject PHP code in there, you can put the PHP tags and then run some code in here. I'm using here, for example, it's a for each loop. It loops through a variable called users. And then you loop that through here using just PHP code, okay? And if you're using the blade syntax, using this as opposed to this, right? I mean, down here, this is the blade syntax. Looks kind of similar as you can see. Uh, you're basically changing the PHP here to the add symbol, right? Pretty much that's it. Um, and then you will use um, the curly braces here as opposed to the PHP echo command. So you can see it's like a replacement. So this is a blade syntax and you will be using this as opposed to the PHP code, right? Um, the rule is that again, a blade file can only allow you to use the blade syntax in here. Okay, like the assemble, the curly braces. If you do not use the blade uh, template, if you try to inject these data into the blade template, you're gonna see these just like regular text. So do not do that. Um, don't mistake by doing that because you will be exposing some sensitive data to the user, to the view people, right? But PHP can like, exist in both templates. So as you can see in either a .php file or a blade PHP file, PHP is still that .php, it doesn't really care, right? So therefore, if I have a file called index.php, I could render my variable using the PHP syntax. If I'm using the blade template, um, I can use the blade syntax, okay? But if you were to use the index PHP, and if you try to use blade syntax, then this is what you're going to see in the browser as opposed to the interpolated variable values, right? So do not do that. But PHP exists in both states. So here is a dot blade PHP file. I can put both blade code and PHP code, right? And here again, PHP code and blade code. So that's it is it's php's world but you know i recommend not to use php code because that's the whole idea otherwise it defeats the purpose of the blade syntax so use it only if you must if you don't use it then you know try not to use it you do everything in the source right um and then just you know do some blade syntax here down here is for creating routes uh, we'll be doing that as well as you can see it takes the get, put, post, delete, patch options in here. Um, this is the request type that's in the route class. Use the colon colon here. Um, and then you pass in the URL and a callback function or again, a closure. The URL here is um, the pattern. The backslash is usually re re um, reserved for the root directory. And then others would be like, for example, users, and then slash, and then you have an ID or something like that, right? 
or bound or whatever. And then you have to provide a callback function to perform when the user gets to this route, what happens? And that occurs inside this event function here. So this is an event driven function, right? That means it will not fire until you actually navigate to this URL, okay? This is a, a, um, a example of what a CRUD operation will look like. So you can see this, a get, a post, a put, a delete, okay? Just the four most common uh, operations here. And for the get, you can use a get, you know, a single ID by passing the ID variable here. Notice the curly braces followed by the ID or the field you want to pass to that uh, URL is with the ID here. Um, there are other ways to do this as well. You can, you know, we'll learn this later, but this is how you pass variable to that. And here a post, you don't need ID. So you just basically, you know, add the data from the body of your form to that uh, data set. Okay, and then the put, you put, you're just updating an existing ID. So that's where you need ID here. And delete is similar. You're deleting every single record, you put ID. If you delete all, you don't need ID, okay? So these are just how this set up. All right, so that is uh, pretty much the a very high overview of Laravel. And uh, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and create our project and Laravel.